Return to Raw, Chapter 8 It must be past midnight when we get back to Wind's Cave and curl up in sleeping bags by the fire. I'm so exhausted that I fall asleep straight away and I barely think about Rose and what she's doing on Mitch's Island. But the next morning, as we're getting ready to go to the Tangled Forest, I wish that she was with us. I know that she'd love what we're about to do, go looking for unicorns. So I write her a note, telling her where we're going, and I leave it under a stone by the entrance to Wynne's cave. If she comes back, she'll know where to find us. Wynne and I walk along past the river, then through a meadow. I use the map to trace our route while Wynne dashes ahead of me, pushing flowers out of our way and surprising furries and the odd monkey. I can't wait to see my first unicorn, but I still find myself hanging back to look at things. I breathe in the minty smell of a raw sunflower and let a ladybird crawl over my arm. Its spots are a dazzling gold one moment, pink the next. Hurry up, shouts Wynne, and I run to catch up with him. This is so different to last time, I say. I know. He shakes his head bitterly. No bikes. This morning, when I told Wynne that there was no point taking one bike, it didn't go down well. No, I say, I mean roars back to how it used to be, full of creatures and flowers, and there are no massive sinkholes to fall into. Or scarecrows waiting to grab us, adds Wynne. Exactly. We leave the meadow and walk in the shadow of the tangled forest. The trees are huge and their fat trunks tower over us. Branches twist together, forming a thick wall that seems impossible to get through. How do we get in? I say, looking for a gap between the trees. I know a special way, says Wynne. He has an excited gleam in his eye, but won't say any more. Wynne always loved surprises. As we walk alongside the forest, Wynne tells me what he's been up to since we left. A lot of practising mind-blowing magic, it seems, and hanging out with the lost girls. Obviously, Stella didn't want me to, says Wynne, and she kept trying to get rid of me and telling me to go away, but the little ones nagged her to let me stay until she gave in. He explains that the lost girls found a boat in the caves below the crow's nest, and used this to sail to and from the mainland until Stella discovered that she gets seasick. That's when they made a bridge, he says. It goes all the way from the crow's nest to the cliffs on the bad side, and I helped them build it. Proudly, he pulls up the sleeve of his robes to show me a yellow loom band bracelet. They gave me this to say thank you. We had a ceremony and everything. He comes to a stop by two big rocks. We've climbed above the tangled forest and it sits below us, a swaying mass of green. We're here, he says. I pull out the map and try to work out where we are. There are rocks everywhere and jungly looking trees and vines. I can't see this place on the map, I say. That's because we never put it on there. We wanted to keep it a secret. Don't you recognise it? I peer between the two rocks. I can see boulders piled on top of each other and hear running water. Mist hangs in the air. Something about the sound of the water and the mist tugs at my memory. Is this boulders and waterfalls? I say. Wynne smiles and nods. Yes, it is, my friend. A shiver of excitement runs through me. Wynne and I used to love hanging out here because... Well, there are loads of boulders and waterfalls. What's not to like? I step between the rocks and lean forward. Below me is a round pool. Turquoise water spills into another pool directly below it, and more and more pools stretch into the distance like a chain of blue beads. They're connected by gushing waterfalls that run so fast that they've polished the rock into smooth water shoots. Sun shines through the mist and jet black butterflies hover over the water. Unable to contain himself, Wynne pushes past me, shouts, Hear me roar! and leaps fully clothed into the first pool. Straight away he's caught in a current that spins him round and round before tugging him towards the next waterfall. He howls with laughter as he shoots out of sight. I hear a splash followed by, 
Come on, Arthur. Happiness rushes through me. Crokey is gone. Grandad is safe. And I'm about to go on the coolest waterside in the world and possibly ride a unicorn. Wait for me, I yell and I throw myself off the rock.